Welcome back my weebs and otakus and sumo fans. It's Otaku no Fuji and today I'm going to do a new sumo wrestler tier list. Last time I did this was in 2022. So, you know, there's been a lot of change in sumo lately and I thought I would do a new ranking list of of the rikishi in the top division in makuchi. This tier maker that I'm using isn't necessarily current but it has everybody that I want to talk about on it. And I added a few at the end just to make sure that everybody that I wanted to talk about is on here. This list is purely how much I like the Rikishi, not how good I think they are. Though, how good they are does kind of play into how much I like them, but it's not the main factor. So, okay, let's start with Obby. I hate Obby. He goes down here. I don't like his I don't like his style of wrestling. I don't like the Nodoa heavy just jamming his big mitts right at their throat, right at the Tachi eye. I hate that. I don't like how he looks like an angry ogre when he fights. And he Henka's too much. So no Henka Henka man is bad. Uh next is Aoyama. I like Aoyama. I'm gonna put him in like B. He was one of the first sumo wrestlers I noticed and remembered who he was because of his horrible, horrible giant man titties. But I kind of liked him as a wrestler too. Asanoyama is next. I was never really on the Asanoyama hype train. Because he, he was an Ozeki and then he got demoted because he was a dumbass. And then he made his big comeback and everybody's like, oh, he's just going to steamroll his way back up to Ozeki and beyond. But it's like, when he was an Ozeki previously... He was mediocre, and so when he came back, I didn't really expect him to get back there because he was miserable when he was an Ozeki to begin with. And now he's been hurt so much, and he tore up his knee in Nagoya 2024, that he's probably never going to get back to Ozeki. I mean, I respect him. I'm going to put him at B. Chiyo Shoma, but I don't like Chiyo Shoma because just like Abi, he henkas way too much. I, I call him Hinka Shoma usually. I, I don't like the Hinkas. I don't like actual Hinkas. I don't think a hit and a shift at the Tachi Eye is a Hinka. I think wildly jumping off to the side is a Hinka. Which is what Abi and Chiyo Shoma do. Dae Sho, I'm going to put him at B also. Because his style of sumo is effective when it works, but everybody has kind of figured him out to you know let him do his real violent pushes and thrusts all he wants but then when you get to the tawara you just take a step to the side and daisho falls over that's how karishma beat him twice in a row multiple times in a row is because daisho he just he leans so far forward he's like at a 45 degree angle and all you got to do is just step to the side and he falls over endo i never was really big on the endo he was popular before i started watching and while I've been watching the last four years, he hasn't really done much. Ganoyama, I always call him Ganoria. If you watch Ganoyama, he starts early almost every single match. And that's how he he gets an advantage because he just goes early and he never gets called for Amada. So I kind of don't really like him. I respect him more than these guys, so I'm going to put him at C. And I also think that his rivalry with with Hoshoryu where they, you know, stare each other down at the Tachi Eye for 10 minutes sucks. Who the hell do you think you are, Gonorrhea? Put your hands down. You're facing an Ozeki. Hakuoho. I'm going to put him at A. I'm a little bit cool on Hakuoho these days. When he first showed up and he got to the top division in 4 Basho, and then he had a really good debut in the top division, I was all in. Then he re-aggravated his shoulder and he had to get surgery and he's been trying to come back from that and he has not looked the same. He has not looked very good. Hiradomi. I like him. I'm not quite as all in on him as some people are because he's done okay lately but he hasn't, you know, he hasn't really beat the top guys. He hasn't really, but I don't think he's quite at the next level yet. Oh, and here's here's somebody that I left on here intentionally because I want to talk about him. Hokuseiho. Of course he goes down here. Because not only is he a bastard jerk face that bullied his stablemates, he was a crappy, crappy sumo wrestler. 
And it's so frustrating because he was handpicked by the greatest of all time to be his successor. Hakuho picked this kid to train him and be the next best guy. And Hokuseiho was a lazy piece of crap. He didn't know how to wrestle. And he never learned. He never got any better. He, he always had the, the lazy just stand up tachi eye. He always had the lazy just, you know, grab him with one arm and just stand there and wait for five minute wrestling style. I freaking hated watching him fight because it was terrible to watch and because he clearly had potential. He was humongous. He was bigger than everybody else in Makuchi. And he had the benefit of getting presumably the best coaching in the entire sport. And he never got better. He never improved. He was so frustrating. Everything about Hokuseiho is frustrating. I'm glad he's gone. Screw him. <laughs> Hokuto Fuji is... I, I respect him. I like calling him Stompy because he always does big stomps. When he uh, when they go to the corner and they grab some salt and they towel off, he always gets a big handful of salt and then puts it up to his forehead like he's got a migraine or something. I like Stompy. Hoshoryu! He's my favorite. I, I've been watching Hoshoryu basically from the start when he first came up to Makuchi. And when he first came up, it was in September 2020. He was like skinny he was little and now he's big now he's you know but he's put on the weight in a smart way so he's not just big fat flabby he always had good technique and good wrestling skills and good ability but now he sort of has the weight and the bulk and the size to take advantage of it and really push the top guys he, he's won a championship and now he's a nozeki people say that he has a bad attitude because he's like, you know, giving people the mean mug at the Tachi Eye. But they always forget that he can't see. He, he's doing the squinty look because he can't see. And when people realize that, they're always like, oh, well, okay, I guess his attitude is okay. Kin Bozon, like, we always called him Win Bozon. Because when he was going through Jurio and stuff, he just kicked everybody's butt. He sort of hit a wall in Makuchi. I don't really like him that much. Karishma, ah, I gotta put him down at B. He had a really great 2023. I mean, it's undeniable. He won two tournaments. He got promoted to Ozeki. And it was funny watching people basically anoint him as the next Yokozuna. Like, oh, he's obviously just going to cakewalk his way up there because he's always been so good. But then Terano Fuji kicked his butt in January 2024, and he hasn't been the same since. That final day when Terano Fuji just threw him into the third row of the crowd, Kirishima has been terrible ever since then. <laughs> Uh, this still says Koto Nawaka, so that shows you how old this is. I like him. He still hasn't won a championship. He's come close. But he he also sort of struggles to win the big matches. He did manage to beat Terano Fuji this last tournament in July. Which is the first time any of the Ozeki... <laughs> any of the new blood Ozeki have, have ever beaten him. Koto Shoho. But he's only had one good tournament. And it was January 2023. That he lost to Takakesho for the championship. So it's like Koto Shoho just, he's never really done much for me. I'm sorry. Meisei, I, I want to like Meisei. I'm going to put him at B. He's a stable maid of Hoshoryu at Tatsunami. Midori Fuji, I'm going to actually put him up there. He's another small guy, but he, he wrestles smart and he can go toe to toe with the, the big guys. That one match where he threw. Hokuseiho, who's, you know, twice his size, and he bodily threw him, was the coolest thing ever. And Midori Fuji's just always so fun to watch because he has to be creative and he has to be smart. Watching him go for the Katasukashi is always fun. I, I, lo I really love watching Midori Fuji fight. Mitaki Umi, I never liked him. I don't know. There's just something about him. He, he got to Ozeki and everything was all like, oh, everything's coming up Millhouse. But then he was just terrible through his entire Ozeki run. I respect him. He's won three championships, but he just, he does nothing for me. Nishiki Fuji, I like him. He's been struggling lately. He made his debut in the top division at the, the COVID Basho, July 2022, where he, he got 10 wins, but I think like three of them were Fusen because his opponents had to drop out because they had COVID. Nishiki, I'm going to put him in A. He, he's sort of a late bloomer Rikishi. 
he's been pretty fun to watch. He's another guy that can't see like Hoshoryu. And I I mean, I'm legally blind myself, and so I, I kind of root for these guys that can't see. Oho is another one of the frustrating guys. He's frustrating more because of just his lineage, what he's supposed to grow into more than anything that he's actually done currently. Because, oh, his grandfather was a Yokozuna, so he's just, he's destined to get up there. So the expectations on him have thus far grossly outweighed his ability. Ono Shou is one of the first favorites that I ever had, but he's another one that's frustrating. He's a pusher thruster that has, he can't keep his feet under him. He always gets too far out in front of his feet and he falls over really easily. When he does well and keeps his balance, he's he can be pretty impressive. Shodai is one of the most frustrating dudes to watch. When he cares, when he actually wants to fight and do well, he's really impressive and really fun to watch, but you can tell that he just doesn't care. He's just there to collect a paycheck. He, sl- he sleepwalked his way through his whole Ozeki run and then finally got demoted. And since then, he just doesn't care. If, if he backs up and has his feet on the Tawara, he just goes out. He doesn't care. And he's so frustrating because you know he's better than that. Takakesho. Yeah, I'm still going to put him at S. Takakesho was my favorite for a long, long time. I loved his style. He was so powerful and so brutal with his pushing. But then he hurt his neck in July 2021. And he's never been the same since. He's won a couple of tournaments. He's won. But he hasn't ever had that same power, that same thrusting just completely dominate matches he needed to just take a year off and let his neck heal takanosho i would say well i'm gonna put him at b takanosho is another kind of frustrating guy other than this last tournament in july 2024 where he was amazing he's just not very good maybe he's figured something out and maybe he's gonna be good going forward but i kind of like takanosho because he's cute (laughs) <laughs> he's just got a big round face he always looks happy people have nicknamed him onigiri kun some people call him knob dog takeyasu eh, i don't know i'm gonna put him at c i had to zoom out a little bit to make sure everything fits uh takeyasu he's he's like the dan marino of sumo in that he's great he's he's been to the top of the mountain before and but he didn't win and he's struggled to ever get back there He's just like Dan Marino. I almost want him to not ever win a championship just because being the the forever second place guy is sort of funny. <laughs> That's mean. I'm sorry. Pamawashi, I'm going to put him in C also. Because he's, he's a guy that I respect him. He's won a couple titles. He's clearly just clinging on as much as he can and so he can break the consecutive matches record. Tara no Fuji obviously goes up here. You know, he's my Yokozuna. I only ever got to see Hakuho do anything once since I've been watching Sumo, where Hakuho beat Tara no Fuji in July 2021. But the whole rest of the time, Tara no Fuji has been my Yokozuna. He's been my top guy, my top dog. And he's great. When he's healthy, he is clearly miles and miles better than everybody else. It's not even close, but he hasn't been fully healthy for so long. Tobizaru, ooh, he's a popular one. No, I don't like Tobizaru. Tobizaru completely lost all of my respect all the way back in July 2021 when he did that ridiculous match with Hakuho. When he he did the Tachi Ai a, mi- a million miles be up behind the line at Hakuho, and Hakuho is just laughing at him because Tobizaru is a dumbass. But the way Tobizaru fights theatrical circus sumo and he's not fun to watch he's better when he just fights straight forward but he always and he he kicks he's always kicking at people's knees especially to Terra no fuji and that's why Terra no fuji always you know yeets him off the doyo into the third row because tobizaru kind of fights dirty he, he's not funny and cute anymore he's just annoying i kind of don't like ura for the same reason i don't like tobizaru because ura does the the circus sumo. I like Ura's personality. I love that he's always smiling and happy. And I love that he wears a pink mawashi. But watching him actually wrestle is frustrating. <laughs> Wakamoto Haru. He's easily a B. 
He's Wakataka Kage's brother, but he's not as good. He's a little, he's bigger and he's more physical. He definitely has a ceiling. He, he can be a Komosubi or a Sakiwaki even, but he's never going to get farther than that. Next is Wakataka Kage. I love him. He, he has the most fun name to say out of everybody. And when he's on, he can be really good. He can fight guys bigger than him. He's, he's really technical. He's a smart wrestler. He's kind of like Hoshoryu in that his, his mind gets ahead of him. And he overthinks matches and he loses stuff that he shouldn't. But when Wakataka Kage is, is on, when everything is working, he can beat anybody. And I mean, he has a championship. Okay, Atami Fuji. Yeah, I'm going to put Atami Fuji in B. He's another one that's, like, he's cute. Look at him. He's just a big, round, cute thing. He's clearly better than most of the Maegashira, but he's not quite good enough to beat the top guys. But he's really young. He's got years and years to continue to learn and to get better. Nabatame. This is sort of an odd choice because he's only ever been in Jurio once. But I love the sumo food videos. And uh, Nabatame is a big part of that. His Jurio debut kind of went about where I expected it to because it's such it's such a tough division. It's so hard. It's such a, a crazy jump up in competition and technique and skill level compared to where he's been fighting. So of course he did bad. You know, it was a learning experience. But I love Nabatame because he's got a fun personality. He's another one that can't see, so I have to root for him. Next, we got Ono Sato. I'm going to put him in A. Clearly, Ono Sato is good. You cannot deny that he's he's like he's clearly good. And he's already a Sekiwake, and he's already won a championship. But he's another one that just, when he's on, he's clearly better than almost everybody. It's been so long since we've had anybody dominate other than Tara no Fuji that I'm just, I'm just waiting for the next guy to come up. And I think Ono Sato is that guy. And last is Takaru Fuji. I'm only going to put him at A. He's he's kind of like Ono Sato in that he's a young guy that just shot up through the ranks and he won a tournament. But my problem with Takaru Fuji is that he's only ever fought anybody once. Because he, he went through Jurio in one tournament. Then he you know had his one tournament in Makuchi and he beat everybody. But he's only ever fought them all once. There's probably going to be a point where people figure him out and then we'll see how good he actually is. Because he looks great now, certainly, but the sumo kind of has a... That's what happens a lot of times in sumo is guys will have a great, great debut and kick everybody's butt and then they sort of you know settle back down to earth as to what they actually are. So it, we're going to have to see how good Takaru Fuji is. Anyway, I think that's a pretty good looking list. As you can tell, I actually like most of the guys. But that was pretty fun, right? I got to talk about sumo for a long time. Nobody in the real world wants to listen to me talk about sumo. But this was Otaku no Fuji with a 2024 sumo wrestler tier list. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Check out otakunofuji.com, and thanks a lot for watching.